team for gold. The Russians won the uh, team for gold last uh, in Atlanta uh, in 1996. And Dmitry Shevchenko, uh, Iga Namdok, Namdok, and Vladislav Pavlovich. Well, here we go. Sounds to me like it's. Uh, Off the mark to start with. Gold medal here in Rio for men's team foil. Up for grabs, France and Russia fighting it out. And it's Erlon Le Pichu and Arta Akmatkuzin up first. Keeping quite a long distance, wants to keep the left handed Frenchman at bay. <laughs> and that is the attack from the Frenchman. Uh, Akbat Kuzin looks back to Cherioni. For me, he did not have a straight arm. He's looking for a line to be called. If you establish the line, if you stick your arm out straight effectively, and you don't let uh, your opponent beat the blade and you keep your arm straight, then you get to uh, you maintain the right of way. And uh, Florin Jorge has been sent to the video already. So it doesn't look like he bends it from where it is at Akmat Kuzin, but was it straight in the first place? That's the question. And uh, Florin Jorge says, no, I don't think you established line because your arm is not straight. So since uh, 1904, when the men's team foil was introduced into the Olympic Games, France have won this team competition seven times, equaling Italy's record. So if France were able to take the gold tonight, they would edge one ahead. The Russians, I think, have won it just twice. have actually won it more than that. Soviet Union, of course, uh, 1960 and 64. If you, yeah, if you include that as being Russian. Uh, Frank down there, the uh, French coach urging them on. So the way that the scores work, if you're new to team competitions in, uh, in fencing, it's an accumulator. Uh, five points at uh, the target for each round. So the first round, the target is five. Once you reach that, uh, which we have, then you change over. Uh, the target for the next round will be 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, all the way up to the ninth round where the target, the final target is 45. Uh, and that actually gives an opportunity for the training team to catch up. Because if the winning team is a uh, can only score five, if they're getting up towards the target, uh, then the training team can score more than that in a single uh, leg. So we're switching over and uh, Erwan Lefbeschu is coming off and Enzo Lefort is coming on. And Arta Atmakuzin has given away to Alexei Chermisnov. Yeah, Chermisnov uh, drew Timur Safin in 32 in the individual event. He was um, oh, subdued. Uh, he wasn't in his best form, we have to say. Uh, but uh, he's guaranteed at least a silver medal here. I'm sure he's going to want to shore things up for the Russians and 
put them back in contention for the gold medal. Very early in this gold medal match though, so uh, too early to call it just yet. of way yeah it's up to the referee to decide who uh, has the final right of way who has the final attack uh, there's a closing counter attack from Saturi Musta if uh, you are being attacked you have uh, a number of choices the first two would be to run away and make your opponent miss and the second main choice is to use your blade to block your opponent's blade, and that's called parry. If you do either of those two things, you effectively steal uh, the chance to hit, your turn to hit. And a counter across from uh, Cherry Mishinov at full speed, uh, very impressive, very well done. Of course, we are seeing lots of counter attacks here, so that's when your opponent has the attack, and you attack into it and it means that you do not have the right of way so you must make sure that if you counter attack you do not get hit even if you get hit off target absolutely if you have the right of way and you get off target and you can get you on target it's still off target because you have the right of way broken time attack is blocked out by Enzo Lafort and the French are off the mark again. Beautiful, able to fashion that uh, riposte from such a tight angle. weapon has come loose, that does happen. Uh, he's surrendering it immediately to the referee, Florian Jorge, and he'll go and grab another one from the bag. I mean, you can tighten them, but uh, I think the referee's here at the Olympic Games is saying we haven't got time for that kind of uh, challenge, although he's not like he has uh, plenty of weapons there to achieve from. towards the end of the bouts. things that we also talk about uh, when we're in a team for competition or team fencing competition is the score indicator uh, the individual uh, tally if you like for the, the fences and that can be seen well you can work that out by how they do individually against their, each one of their opponents uh, the team score is on the top of your screen so at 9-4 uh, and it's 4 3 to uh, Lefort over Tremisinov. Yeah, the indicator put simply is the total number of hits you score minus the total number of hits scored against you over all three legs as uh, Enzo Lefort uh, continues a strong start for the French. Well, it's still early days. Always better to be in the lead. Time now for the Olympic bronze medalist in the individual competition, Timor Safin. And he will go up against Jeremy Caddo of France. Thank you. 
So the target score for this third period is 15. And Timor Safin would have to be going some to get up to that score. He'll be just looking to try and have a positive indicator at the end of this. And he can score more than five. He's allowed to score more than five. The most that Cado can score is five. Yeah, well, Timo Safin has been on some stunning form here in Rio. And Jerry Caddo has been pretty well for the French team today. Caddo on the attack. Now Safin moving forward. Good to look at the footwork as well as the actual the hand the target. There we go. Safin coming in. Counter attack. Yeah, you see, Cado is uh, as he's approaching. Uh, he's got his arm right back. So the moment. He's in defensive mode, so the arm is out. And the attack game is working very well for both teams yet again. We land that counter attack. And when you close the distance right up, uh, if you get it right, your opponent's point is behind you and then they have to bring their arm back and effectively their attack fails. Start being patient and taking his time. Whipping that foil around before he then landed perfectly on target. Trying to keep his blade out of the way when he's moving forward. Blade contact would change the right of way. Two apiece in this encounter in the third period. Nice attack from Cabo there. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, again, it's uh, the Russians calling off the line. It's, um, no, I don't think so. It's way too. Well, it's all about when uh, Jeremy Cadu starts his attack. Can't really, uh, so that on this side is uh, Florent Jorge, who is on the uh, video now. He's consulting with Javier Lorenzo, Spanish referee. And we can look at both uh, coaches, uh, Stefano Cerioni and then and referee sticks with his decision, Mr. Lorenzo. And he's happy that Cano started the attack. So no more videos for Timo Safin. Certainly not on this leg anyway. It's 
With the clock ticking down, still 45 seconds, enough time for Haddo oh. to see this one out. But he's in no rush. Okay. Afford to be patient. Oh. With a seven point lead. attack from Saffin went through. 4-3. Saffin working very hard here. It's a bad one. And uh, goes 4-4. Saffin puts him in his front knee there. As he's going forwards. And just found him early as well. A silly step before that, uh, there we go. But uh, Saffin just his knee going forwards. Four apiece. I have to say, Safi is the best performer for the Russian team so far. And the clock ticks down. Time for one more. I think if we go at it hard. Beautiful slow motion replay here. Look at the agility of these athletes. And there you see Safin using his sword arm to deflect the blade of uh, Jeremy Caddo away from his target, which is perfectly legal. And uh, a video review called by uh, Jeremy Caddo. And Javier Lorenzo comes back and sticks with his decision. So. Both had an appeal in this fight, both had it overturned. And it looks like Timo Safin will settle for closing the gap by one. And uh, the French still lead, uh, but that lead is now back down to five hits from six. So the score 14 9 as we go through into the second third. We've had three of nine. And we come out of the third and into the fourth. Yeah, up next, let's see uh, Arta Akbakuzin revisiting the piece for the second time on a negative for indicator of the world number 29 who came 15th in the individual event and he's up against Enzo Lefort also returning to the piece for the second time world number 22 came 24th in the individual event and he comes onto the piece with a plus two indicator so the target score for the French is 20 Job for the Russians here, uh, very much picking up where Timo Safin left off and just trying to close the gap to the French. No need for them to panic at this stage, they can take their time. They didn't reach the target score of 15 in the last leg, and uh, there's no need of the uh, Russians play it right for either team to get to the target score of 20 in this fight. Just got to close the gap. That's the only job for them. Oh. 
Great stuff from our attack by Kuzin. Second intention power across there from him. First light up for Enzo Lafour. This accumulator is that it is possible to reverse the deficit. And again, another counter attack for the Russians now. The masters of that today, absolutely superb counter and then block. Very, very good. And they close the gap to just two. Simultaneous, hard to say. Back in the Push. Go. And the four has called for a video replay. Debate about it. You can see from Jorge listening intently to uh, Lorenzo, Lorenzo explaining his, how he felt about the decision. And his words, or this is what it was for me. He stuck with his decision. Back to within one. And well, back in this fight. Target light from Enzo Lafour. And that attack goes through. Again, please, says uh, Frank Gavin. Uh, this time, the closing out of the attack didn't work for Kuzin. Uh, and this time, Enzo Lafour strikes again with an attack. He's going a little bit more direct than the end. He's just okay. up the pace at the end, the acceleration into the final action has uh, suddenly increased dramatically for the French club. So 17-14, the team score, the score in this round is now 4-5. So it started, Enzo Lefort started badly in this round, but he's managed to pull things back. If he can get this next hit, okay. it'll be level five all against Atmat Kuzin. Nice, 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 nice. Beautiful attack from the Frenchman. Remember, the target is 20. And they can score more than five. Enzo Lafour can score six. And Makuzin can score pretty much at will. If he needs to, if he can. And that is it. Enzo Lafour. Well, edges one point ahead. And at one stage, I think it was five one down uh, in that leg. He managed it to pull it back to 6-5, so a brilliant finish uh, by, en by Enzo Lafour. It did look like the Russians were turning the tide, but in the end of that period, uh, Enzo Lafour actually came away with a slight uh, positive uh, indicator. He just upped his intensity, didn't he? He just, he just increased the pace. And you've got to now look at uh, the Russian side and say, right, Akmat Kuzin's come out of the second final, a minus five indicator, 
You've got Alexi Cherimisson for minus two uh, coming on next. And this man here, Timur Safin, on your right, who is on a plus one indicator. Will they start to think about bringing Dmitry Zerbchenko on? Well, one man they won't take off is Timur Safin. He's definitely their in-form player right now. Sure that either of the substitutes for either of these teams check that one because if they haven't and they don't appear on the piece here tonight, they will not get Olympic medals as far as we're concerned. Well, the Russians faced uh, Great Britain uh, in their first match and they didn't use their substitute. Uh, they then faced uh, the United States and they didn't use the substitute either. So uh, uh, Dmitry Zerubchenko has not fought yet. And the French went up against uh, China in the first match and they didn't use uh, uh, Tony Pailisi. Yeah, JP Tony Pailisi. Uh, and in the, uh, the match against Italy, they didn't. So uh, you're right uh, to say that neither of the substitutes have been blooded yet, metaphorically. Uh, and therefore, in order for them to get a medal, be it gold or silver, they will need to come on. Now, if it's a tight match, I can't see the Russians bringing on a substitute just out of, uh, I don't know, out of uh, a goodwill gesture to that teammate. Most of the French team, either to be fair. No room for sentimental here this is the olympic gold medal match however if the french start pulling away and if they get even further away then i think the russians may say well you know what dmitry zirchenko you've come and you've supported us let's just get you on for a fight and you can stand on the podium later on A couple more matches after this before we can start seeing which direction the uh, coaches are going to take on uh, substitutions. Remember the most important legs here are seven, eight and nine. You will see some caginess early on. Um, this match, fortunately, we haven't seen too much. The French are really going at the Russians and the Russians are trying their best to stay in touch. Absolute beauty that one. Timor Safin. The hand speed is from Lamar here. Watch this. Bang, right on the shoulder. Tiny, tiny uh, portion of the target area. Just flicks it over the top. And off target from the French fencer. Great stuff from the French fencer, who's really, really up for this. Jeremy Canet has uh, gritting his teeth.
There one, Le Pouchou, 4-2 up in this encounter with Timor Safin, the bronze medalist. And Safin's off the back of the piece there. He's off the back line. And Erwan Le Pouchou is going to hand over to Jeremy Caddo and Timo Safin will hand over to Alexei Cheremisinov. second leg plus three up and on the pursue is gone plus seven up and Safin after that one is on a minus two joining Marta Akkuzin on two fights both finishing on the negative indicators so here we go into the sixth and the target also oh, has come loose there He's not going to separate them there. We're not going to separate who started the attack. Off. Just kept moving forward, the hand held back, keep the blade out of the way. He's not going to give that either way. Right back from the French fencer, waiting for the moment. Parried by Cherry Misanoff. He's going to get a yellow card, the French fencer. Turns his back. His back. Yeah, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. It's dangerous for a start. And so, uh, well, uh, you can't really wield your weapon uh, at your opponent if you're facing the wrong way. <laughs> you can run away! It is not an option. Oh, great attack from Trey Missing. Yeah, Kado trying to desperately get his arm out for the stop hit. This arm comes out, but he's already too far away. Stop it. I must start with the arm coming out first before you start moving your feet. So 2 0 in this leg for the Russians. Jerry Misinov trying his hardest to close the gap. Very close there with a the circular seat flick hit, just hitting the top half of the arm. And uh, Frank Gordon is uh, screaming at his charge. Get a few more hits. And it's Haddo having to come out on the attack to stop uh, Cherry Misanoff attacking him. Sticks out a line, but uh, Cherry Misanoff has already beat that out of the way to establish uh, his intention to attack. And a lovely close encounter. This is good stuff from the Russian. They've had a gritty battle throughout the day today. 
They've got another gritty one on their hands here, and Alexei Cherimishinov is doing a great job for the Russian team. Frank Badan screaming at uh, Jeremy Cado. Yeah, easily possible to pull this back. If Cherimishinov in this leg plays a blinder. Still, the attack is given for uh, Jeremy Cado. Uh, Cherry Misunov uh, turns to Stefano Cherioni, the coach, to say, shall I call for a video here? I think he might have a shout, you know. I think he has called the video already. So does the attack stop there when he brings his arm back? I think there's a shout for this, and I think Cherry Misunov uh, is quite right to call for a video. Oh, Jorge has had a look and he comes back to the piste. Decision stands. And uh, Jeremy Snuffer is politely uh, requesting just a, a, a more in depth uh, analysis of the hit from the referee. The referee has given that to him. Jeremy Snuffer, whilst not happy, seems satisfied with the referee's decision. Always good to understand how a referee has made a decision so that you can adapt to what you're doing in the future. Harry Costa's no. Caddo in danger of turning his back again. Just about managed to cling on to uh, facing forwards. to cling on here. Still a minute 36 on the clock. And Alexei Cheremisinov is clawing the deficit back. there looking on I wonder if we're going to see him on the piste well if it gets tight I'm not sure and the Russians are making a good advance here yeah attack initially failing from uh, Cherry Mishin but I suspect this was a bit of second intention he's uh, just managed to close out on a continuation of his attack his initial attack and I think the initial attack was a fake He's not trying to hit with the first action. He's trying to trick his opponent uh, into making an action which he then works off. This time, Kado uses his feet. So he said, if someone's attacking you, you can use your feet to make the attack miss. That's exactly what Kado just did then. Picked up the right of way. Uh, and just his second hit in the, this leg of the match. In a good position here, six points ahead. And we'll be going into those crucial final three legs at the end of this leg. Well, not necessarily. Cherimisinov can score a few more here. He does have the potential to keep going. Doesn't need to stop at five. The target is uh, five for the French fencer because. We were 25 16 as we came in to this leg. 30 is the target score. And Alexei uh, Cherimisinov can go to town if he wants. Yeah. Let's say at this stage there. Uh, that six points up, so could be a very, very good outing for uh, the Cherry Russian It's getting better by the second. And for the neutrals in the crowd, that's a good thing. It's making a contest out of this.
got to say, Jeremy Caddo has felt brilliantly today, but has just come a little unstuck in the gold medal match. And maybe there's an argument for the French to be thinking of, about JP, uh, Tony Hennessy coming on uh, for uh, Caddo's last fight, the penultimate leg. He is up against Arthur Akkusin, who has been struggling. So one minute left of this leg and Jeremy Caddo will be just hoping it was over. And he gets one back. How much this means to Frank Baudin, the uh, French coach screaming his support. medal at the uh, 1996 Summer Olympics and the 2001 World Championships. He was twice uh, a team world champion in 97 and 2001. And thanks to add a coaching medal uh, to that collection, a coaching Olympic medal. responsibility for the fall program after the 2012 Summer Olympics for the French team which uh, by their standards well the first time in history the French have not won an Olympic medal of any colour in any discipline at any Olympic Games. Let any more points go. The lead cut to four now. It was comfortable. Oh, is he just off the back line? No, no not quite. Toes on there. If uh, my translation of uh, Stefano Cherioni's signals are right, he said to uh, Alexei Cherimisinov, go and get another hit. Don't stop. He's got another hit. Now let's see what the instruction is from the Russian camp. Is that enough? Have you done it enough, Alexei? Let's see what uh, Stefano Cherioni does, because whatever he says, you must do. I can't see him telling him to stop here. I think, go on, try and get another one. 20 seconds left. You easily score another one in that time. He's going for it. Oh, and he's let one slip. Kind of gets one back at the end. Good time, I think they're still going to fight this out. They both want it now. Yet another one of those counter attacks. So the attack carried, the attack from the French on the left was blocked out by Cherry Misanoff and uh, wasn't able to land his riposte but did hit off target with the remise of the riposte.
<laughs> the dying seconds of that uh, that leg, able to salvage something, and comes off uh, with the five nine defeat. And the lead now for the French. Well, it's big, but it's not as big as it was. It's not insurmountable. No, it's certainly not. And uh, Cado, who spent so bravely and so well all day uh, for the French team, comes off after his second fight with a minus five indicator. He's been hit five more times than he's been able to hit the Russians. Um, Alexei Cherry missing off uh, took a minus two indicator and turned it into a positive two indicator there, uh, taking that fight 9-5. But we now enter the crucial stages legs 11 sorry legs 7 8 and 9 and up next is this man Enzo Lefort up against uh, the Russian on the right hand side Timur Safin the Olympic silver medal in the individual event uh, went to Safin Safin has been fencing well in this competition and crucially uh, Alexei Cheremisinov uh, will fence last uh, for the Russian team. It does seem to be that the Russians have the momentum. The tide has almost turned. Antonio four and a plus three indicator make that plus four scoring the first hit in the seventh leg. Johnny Cado had a wobble, but Enzo Lefour is coming out to uh, try and shore things up for the French. Safin and 2-1. His score over Lefort. No point scored there. They reset where they were on the piece. over the back line once he can hit off target. Those quarters and the four's got one. Seems to me like the French have started to rush a little bit now. So eager are they to get through the fights and get out of the way of the uh, Russians. Oh, there for two seconds. Just showing the flexibility. Uh, Benzo in the fourth. Gaining that strike with his arm right behind his head. Oh, very nice. Kept the distance close there, the Frenchman. And as soon as the Russian started to launch his attack, uh, and the four pounced, dived straight on them, close the distance right up. Look how close this is. There by the Frenchman, but Timon Safin delicately hits on the attack. Nice little hit there, very neat and tidy. Still faint disengage, fainting to the outside, and back inside to the body. 
This indeed is where you go underneath the parry of your opponent. Came into the fight, five hits down the Russians. And three apiece, there's still five hits down. Who's going to be replaced? Oh, quite right, coming off a penultimate fight then. Ricardo is the one that's been shipping hits, so uh, it kind of makes sense tactically. I don't think this is a sentimental substitution to make sure that uh, JP Tony Hillesi gets the uh, gets the medal, whatever colour that turns out to be. Yeah, Jeremy Caddo made hard work. I don't think the uh, Dan's not very happy about that one. And so that's two actions. And another close out there from Timor Safin. All of a sudden, this is a match again. Yeah, just three points in it. Just needs another two. That's his, his attack, yes. Saffin came in out of time. There was no beat of the blade. There was no parry. And this is built from patience in the attack. Waiting for the counter attack, not rushing. So if you're new to fencing, it doesn't matter who hits first, it matters who has the right of way, who has established the attack. Four just needs one to see this through to the eighth. And there it is. Another oh, beauty. Oh, he steadied his nerves there, didn't he, in the end? Oh, yes, he did indeed. And Enzo Lafour can let out a big shout. His work is done. Pump full of adrenaline and will hand over uh, to the substitute, JP Tony Felici. Safin is going to hand over to Arta and Matt Kuzin. Yeah, Timur Safin's finished uh, his three fights with a negative two indicator, so he shipped a couple of hits to the French. In that fight, because of the substitution of uh, Jeremy Cadeau, we can say, we can confirm that Cadeau finished on a minus five indicator, and so the four completes his three fights with a plus three indicator. So a mixed bag there for the French, but uh, Enzo Lafour comes out uh, to the good you know, with a positive indicator. He's outscored the Russian opponents he faced. JP Tony Halesi, short offencer. Uh, let's not underestimate him. He may well be the substitute, but he's picked up the blade there. Well, that's actually been given to the Russian. I thought that uh, Halesi, Tony Halesi picked up the blade, but perhaps well, not perhaps, definitely the referee's seen that differently. I won't underestimate uh, the French substitute, but you have to say that Arthur Atmacuzzi is coming out and as well. He's thinking this is a big opportunity for him to bring the Russians even more into this game. 
Well, he'll be thinking, what do I have to give Alexei Cheremisinov, Cheremisinov uh, for the final leg? So the target in this round is 40. So it could go either way. I'm attacking from too far out there. Uh, McCusin parries uh, Tony Hulissi's attack and Tony Hulissi puts in a counter parry. That's this. Attack is parried. The cost is parried. And there's the counter cost from the Frenchman on the left hand side. And I don't see that uh, the referee is going to change his mind here. That uh, replay is very, very conclusive. It would be a surprise if this is overturned. So 37, 32. That lead of five points remains. Plenty of time left in this period. Two minutes of fencing. Look at Ahmed, Ahmed Kuzin go. JP Tony Halissi has got to do something. If you could just get a couple, or just one more hit on. Starting to think that maybe Ahmed Kuzin is going to race through to 40. JP Tony Halissi needs to put something on the board. He certainly does. He certainly needs to stop the work. That's his attack off target. I don't think that's going to be uh, given to the Russian. Uh, fighting for everything, the Russian. They're fighting for decisions that really shouldn't uh, be given for them. Uh, oh, the gamesmanship is great to see. and uh, Agnac Cousin can control the distance. Again, came from too far out. And there's a bit uh, more... I don't know, they, they seem a little bit more relaxed in the Russian box, even though they trail. They have been catching up dramatically, and now they've levelled up in the penultimate fight. They were behind by some way earlier on. Six points uh, at the... Uh, well, nine points even at the uh, biggest gap after five hits. And five fights, but now they're level again. They had to work hard at it. And slowly but surely, they back together. Well, the 
defence that did it for them was uh, Alexei Cherimisinov. Uh, his uh, round against uh, Kado, 9-5. And it's Alexei Cherimisinov who will fence next for the Russians. Well, this is bound to get to 40 now with uh, just a little under half of this particular leg to go in terms of time. 1.27 on the clock. 22 on the clock, sorry. And uh, it's... Uh, well, you've got to think that Arta Atmakuzan will be the one to get to 40. He's got the momentum. The question is, can JP Tony Hellesi do something, just get a couple of hits, not give a three-point deficit to Erwan Lepushu in the final? Just can't get past Atmakuzan's defence. Got no answer to it at all. Uh, JP Tony Hellesi and uh, I think uh, it was the right thing to do for the French to substitute that man there Jeremy Caddo but Tony Hellesi has come unstuck against Walter Atmakuzin maybe he should just try something different maybe try a surprise attack he really doesn't have anything to lose I know that the lead is so important but Atmakuzin is on such a roll We're getting lots of advice from the French box is uh, JP, and uh, he needs it. The problem is his attack has been too far out, so yes, I understand what saying, he's trying something different. But he doesn't close the distance first, and he's going to struggle to get past the defence of the solid Russian. And that's the other thing, he's uh, only hitting uh, the target every now and again, he's missed a few times. So one minute left in this period, and Arta Atmakuzin again. Brilliant deception of the blade there. JP Tony Hillesi really in his saw round trying to find uh, Atmakuzin's blade. Atmakuzin just completely avoiding his opponent's blade. And as Tony Hillesi stepped in, Atmakuzin just stuck his arm out. And the Frenchman ran onto his sword. This is an amazing turnaround from this Russian team. World number three. And they are in control of the gold medal match here at uh, the Olympic Games of 2016. And a final para repost. Finally a para repost from the Russian after a whole raft of uh, actions of the blade. They saw it cleanly there in the slow motion replay. Atmat Kuzin parrying and then hitting on target. Remarkable performance from Atmat Kuzin to follow up Cherry Misimov's uh, sixth leg for the Russians. And between the two of them, they have put the Russians right back in this. A little bit of pressure showing on the face of the anchor for France, Luan Le Pichu. Oh, finally, yes. we just get something special from JP Tony Hennessy, and uh, it's uh, Arta Akmakuzin trying to call for a video. Uh, to say he was off the piece, and you can see Cherry Mishnoff saying, uh, sorry, uh, Cherry Honey saying, no, please don't do that. Don't waste it, he was on the piece. But it was desperation stuff. That might be the difference. JP Tony Hillesi, I think he can risk again. This is the video. He has gone for the video. Yeah. Well, 
If you want to cheer on, he's going to be pretty annoying with arm attack that cruiser. He needs to use that video later in this fight. I know there's only 20 seconds left, but uh, he will not be happy if uh, there's a fight. Oh, oh, yeah. But there isn't. That is it. So the Russians are going into the last leg. As we come out of the eighth and into the ninth with a two-point lead. And Alexei Cherenisinov, uh, who's fenced brilliantly uh, in this bout with a positive uh, score indicator, I think two, is it? Uh, against uh, Erwan Le Pichu of France. Le Pichu also with a positive indicator, so we've probably got the best two fencers uh, from this match facing off against each other uh, in the final leg. Yeah, Lepeshu is on a plus seven at the moment, and as you said, Troy Misimov on a plus two. The uh, question here is, is uh, the Lepeshu house going to have an extra uh, silver or gold medal in it? Because uh, eight years ago, uh, Lepeshu got married to a certain Ines Babakri, who got the bronze medal in the women's individual for a couple of days ago. Uh, both of them are going to be celebrating Olympic medals. The question is for the question, will it be silver or will it be gold? Uh, the question going for it, Paro Acosta is uh, off target for Cherry Lusinov. And the question setting his stall out early on. I'm coming after you, I'm going to try and close the gap. To you, and then I'm going to try and beat you. Sure, that's a chance to have to get similar things. Again, off target. The push you had the right of way. So we set where they are on the piece, no point scored. Power of pass, Cherry Misanov. And Cherenisinov just needs four more points. Erwan Le Pichu needs to get on that score sheet against Cherenisinov. To be a little bit patient now, I think. Oh. Casual coming forward then from Cherenisinov. That was a bit of a, an own goal, really. Yeah. A sitter, wasn't it? I mean, it was a tiny bit. And I think the other thing that we've got to think about here is Lepeshu's head. Uh, I don't think uh, the Russians are going to let him get away with ducking it quite so much as he is. I may see a call here for quite a few video re replays. As soon as they're convinced that Lepeshu has come to target with his, uh, with his mask, they will call for it. a bit of a scrap yeah and uh, when it is a scrap you've got to watch out for the Russians they've had uh, well they've, they've gritted their teeth through their matches today and they got through 
They've got right back into this one from a long way back. So Aaron Lukashu has got a big job on his hands. Attack straight through there for Cheremisinov. Right onto the bin of the mask of the Frenchman. So 42 plays 40. 45 the target score. Again, the French fences have all been attacking from just a little too far out. And Lukashu, much shorter than Cherry Misinov, needs to get a little bit closer before he launches that attack. Otherwise, he's easily blocked out by the Russian. And the Russian hits the target on the attack there. Lukashu still looking at primed and up for this. This for the gold medal. Oh, now Lepeshu found the blade there. He had the right of way, but these Russians have been landing continuations, closing counter attacks, and just the regular counter attacks uh, like it's going out of fashion today. And they've got another one here. Watch, Lepeshu gets the right of way with the beat, but the Russian dives in, turns his body, and makes it very difficult to have his target hit. They're two away from the gold medal now, the Russians. Attack finally makes it way, its way through for Erwin Lepeshu. And uh, not done. They're not out of this, but this is incredibly tight for them. Oh, now, is a yellow card going to come out? Now, I've got to say, Lepeshu's head went right down there. So 41. 43, make that 41, 44, and the Russians are just one point away from the gold medal. Oh, this is heartbreaking for the French team. The Russians, though, have fought their way back into this brilliantly. A hit given there. going to be virtually it's going to be very very difficult for the push you that's it oh, brilliant stuff from the russians the russians have won the gold medal it is a gold medal to the russian team and the three of them celebrate they didn't use uh, their substitute uh, dmitry zevchenko so he will not get a medal uh, that is how uh, ruthless the russians are they did not uh, they could not bring him on and uh, the French, well, the Russians are just, well, look at how pumped up they are. Look how much that medal means to them. Safin can add to his medal hall. He won the bronze uh, in the individual and confirmation that the Russians are the winners.